Welcome back to Alliance's Heroes, where heroes in business align. To be part of our super community and find out more about Alliance's, visit www.alliances.com. Now, back to our super host, David Kogan, founder of Alliance's. I love my job. I mean, it's all being surrounded by heroes. What more could I possibly ask for? And we unmask them here on the show so you can learn from them. I mean, we just had the personal in-home technology training master's groovy techs. That's all over the news. Later on, we're going to have the CEO of Great Hearts Academy, most incredible charter school. And later on, we're going to be having just amazing heroes. You just have to listen the entire time. So, you know, we all love superheroes. Well, the hero show in business, I mean, that's what we're about. But our next hero might give us a run for our money. He is the creator of Square Egg Entertainment, and this is the parent company and management firm, you ready for this, of Phoenix Comic Con, Phoenix Fan Fest, Minnesota Fan Fest. That's Matt Solberg, and you could reach him at phoenixcomiccon.com. Let me go right into this, Matt. What makes and why is Phoenix Comic Con and all these Comic Cons just such like a packed, nonstop, incredible show that everybody wants to go to? That standing room only. What is the? Why are people so attracted to this? It's a it's a social event. It's a social activity for those who love comic books and science fiction and all the different geek culture genres. So for one weekend out of the year, which is Phoenix Comic Con. People get to celebrate and discover their inner geek. They get to have a good time with people who share similar passions as they do. But there are thousands and thousands of people. I mean, it's almost it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a line of just trying to get in. Let alone when you're there, being surrounded by it. I mean, I'll tell you what. I go there with my uh, I've gone there with my family. I go there with my son. Plan on going to your next one. It's like you're in another world. Yes. In many ways, it's kind of like going to Disneyland, only for geek culture, and again, for that one weekend out of the year. Uh, and our attendees have fun, and we're very much a multimedia show. So if you're a fan of comic books, or if you're a fan of horror, if you're a fan of uh, you know science fiction, there's ideally something for everyone at Phoenix Comic Con. And let's talk about it, because there may possibly be pe some people out there that are listening, possibly, mm -hmm. that have not gone. First of all, let me ask you some quick questions. Okay. Age. Tell me the age range of the people that go. The the average age is probably in the mid 30s to the 40s, but we cross all demographics as far as age. So we have families that are bringing out their kids in, in strollers and toddlers, and we have those who are 60s, 70s, and 80s who are coming who are either bringing uh, their kids or their grandkids, or they have been fans themselves. You got to remember things like Star Trek are 50 years old, so there could be people who were in their 20s when Star Trek first came out who are now in their 70s who have maintained that passion uh, over the course of their life. My jaw dropped because a couple years I went there with my family and I saw an older, much older gentleman there and he was dressed up and looked exactly like the guy from the movie Up. I mean, it was just like he was holding the balloon. It was the whole thing. I was like, this is just incredible. I mean, it's not Halloween costumes. People take this very serious. They do indeed. And many of our attendees who do dress up in costume will spend months leading up to the show preparing their costumes. And for the ones who are attending multiple days, they will uh, have different costume changes. So they have their costume that they're wearing on a Thursday and a different one that they're wearing on a Friday. Uh, we have attendees who will wear costumes that are very recognizable. So you referenced the gentleman who was dressed as the old man uh, from Up, uh, while well, people dressed as Darth Vader and Batman. But then you also have attendees who they try to be as obscure as possible because they want that one person who says, I get who you are. You're that one sp supporting character from that one episode on that one TV show. And I got to tell you, there's one person every year that's there that stands out that looks exactly like this character exactly and when i tell you the name i bet you're going to know who that is and it's loki there mm -hmm. is a guy there that looks exactly like loki in fact i wanted to hire him just to go out to to a bar with him and see what people would do <laughs> with him in costume but um so not only that too though it's also to tell me what goes on there because besides people walking around you also have uh, a number of vendors there. yep 
there's really multiple things that take place at Phoenix Comic Con. So one is the exhibitor hall where you're able to purchase all manner of pop culture related items from old comic books to movie posters to toys, uh, along with a, a large local artist community doing their art and selling their own stories. Uh, that's kind of one focus. Another is the different content and programming and events that we have. Everything from a standard Q&A with your favorite celebrity to different costume contests, fashion shows, how-tos, as well as just let's get together to talk about your love of Superman or let's get together to talk about uh, why you love a particular anime program. Uh, there's also just great people watching that takes place. Uh, everybody in costume, everybody's taking out uh, over the downtown area, and there is a large number of people who attend our event that really are attending for that interaction and to find and meet other people who share those same passions and interests. And we're talking with Matt Solberg. He is in charge. He is head of the entire PhoenixComicCon.com Fan Fest, Minnesota Fan Fest, and doing so much more. And you're listening to David Kogan with the Alliances Heroes Show. This is a place where entrepreneurs align. You may have the chance, possibly, to meet Matt in person at one of our many experiences, our private roundtables, grand tables, and so, so much more. Who is, Matt, your favorite superhero? Captain America. Captain America, I love it. And there's so... Let me tell you, there's a lot of Captain America stuff that you could buy at Phoenix Comic Con. There is indeed. I mean, I've seen these shields that they're made of solid metal. They go for, I don't know, $700, $800, $900, and, I mean, it's the, it looks exact. Yes. Do you own one? No. I know where you can get one, so coming up, <laughs> coming up, and typically when are the Phoenix Comic Cons taking place? It's Memorial Day weekend this year, so it's May 25th through the 28th. We're typically that weekend uh, to the first weekend in June. All the information is on phoenixcomiccon.com, as you've been mentioning. So how did you get involved where every child who has read comics, gone and see all these movies and stuff, would love to have your job? How did I get involved? Yes, how did you, this all come to be? I grew up reading comic books, and when I was a teenager, I used to buy and sell comic books at, at local uh, events. I grew up in the Minnesota area, so in the Twin Cities. Uh, years later, after having gone to college, had a career in uh, politics and political campaigns, found my way uh, down here to Phoenix and was looking for something different to do that wasn't politically related. And I had the light bulb moment that, geez, maybe I should get back into comic books. Maybe I should organize a convention. And I'll tell you that that first show that we did, it was a one-day show. It was like a flea market. Uh, we had maybe 30 vendors. Uh, we had 432 attendees. And it was in a ballroom at, at what was at the time a Best Western uh, Grayson and Awatuki. It's now a, a Four Points by Sheraton. Um, but from there... Uh, it's grown, and this last year we had over 100,000 unique attendants. That's huge. It's massive. I mean, it, that's a lot of people watching. It's Our show is one of the, probably the five largest pop culture-related shows within the country by both physical size and attendance. And, you know, we've had a variety of unique heroes on our show just like you. In fact, we had one person, he owns a comic store, then they were they had hold the Guinness five Guinness Book of World Records for selling um, and buying the most expensive comics that are out there. So com the whole comic industry is just mm -hmm. gone. What do you think about with all these movies, mm -hmm. too, the Avengers? It's just constant. Like within the past four years, more than ever, more and more movies. Again, why is that? I think it's just a perfect storm. If you look at kind of the rise of geek culture and referencing back to about five or six years, you've got Big Bang Theory, you've got Walking Dead, you do have all the superhero movies, but it even ties in with social media where it's much easier to align with others who have the same interest as you and the same passion. Even selfie culture, right? Take a selfie of yourself in this great costume, look at me and get comments from people who say, oh my God, like your costume looks great or I recognize who you are. Uh, and even at Phoenix Comic Con or other similar events where you're able to meet celebrities, you have that aspect of look at who I'm getting to meet. So it's really just been a perfect st a perfect storm that ha has both floated our boat, um, but has made all of it much more prevalent within, within culture, within pop culture, where you do have the superhero movies that are coming out every couple of months, where you do have Star Wars being rejuvenated. Uh, I think ultimately it's a good thing. Less than 30 seconds left, Matt, okay. but I need to ask you this. You know, what would you say to all the children who attend Comic-Con, advice that you can give to them to be as successful as you have and to be able to follow what just your passion and the drive that you have for what you're doing? What advice, secret tips you can give? You just hit the, hit the nail on the head with the word of passion. is finding something that you're passionate about and being able to do it and, and really just going forward in some ways. 
uh, understanding that there are risks as associated with it. Um, but if you're doing something that you love, uh, well, there might be work involved in it. It will never feel like a job. Well, I got to tell you, Matt, you bring so much joy to many fans who attend your events. You help connect them with their passion and those that look up to you. Matt Solberg, make sure you go to phoenixcomiccon.com because you're going to see also the Alliance's Hero Show. They're doing interviews, so make sure you may have a chance to meet, well, me, David Kogan, or more importantly, our producer, Glue. We can't wait to attend and see your heroes. Matt Solberg, go to phoenixcomiccon.com. This is David Kogan, and continue to listen because it only gets better. <laughs>